obviously we've seen these tests conducted by North Korea over the last several weeks, which brings up the question as we watch our own test, how safe are we defending against these missiles from North Korea? Well, first of all, the missiles that North Korea has been firing, we've seen before, uh, they don't represent in any way intercontinental ballistic missiles. Uh, the SCUD that they recently fired is 20-year-old technology. They've been upgraded, of course, but again, uh, these are not uh, long-range missiles, uh, and they don't represent a threat to the continental United States at all. Does that mean you're not particularly worried about North Korea and their capacity in the future? No, I'm absolutely worried, uh, and I, I think that we and the rest of the uh, civilized nations of the world have got to take a stand and prevent them from developing an ICBM capability and a nuclear weapons capability, whether it's short range or medium range. So prevention and defense can go one and the same, but they can be separate. So let's just take one of those two things. First of all, when, it, when we look at the coast of our, our nation, down the California coast, Washington, California, Oregon, how, how safe are we? How are we able to defend against incoming missiles of whatever capability? Uh, we're safe today. The concern is uh, the technology that's being developed by some of our adversaries and potential adversaries. And we've got to continue to invest, uh, like Admiral Searing talked about with the Missile Defense Agency, in order to uh, maintain our technological edge. It's that description of hitting a bullet with a bullet really hit home with me from, from Jonathan's report. It, based on your experience, is that what we're trying to do to intercept a missile? Is that an accurate assessment of, of how challenging it is? It certainly is an accurate description. Uh, we've been conducting these tests over the years, and we've learned something from every one of the tests, whether they were hits or misses. Uh, in fact, one could argue that we learn more from a miss because we continue to upgrade and improve the technologies, uh, and we will uh, prevail in this effort. How good are we at that? Well, we're the best in the world. Uh, there are many different kinds of threats that we've got to face out there, and we can defend against them uh, from ships at sea, our Aegis systems aboard our uh, destroyers and cruisers is very effective against intermediate range threats. Uh, we've got land-based systems uh, in Europe and in, in, in uh, Alaska. So we, we are staying ahead of the technological threat and we've got to continue to do that because if we stop investing in conducting these kinds of tests, then uh, we're just going to uh, walk away from uh, the uh, need for defending ourselves. Right, a less promising scenario. It is reassuring, and we appreciate that, Admiral, just to realize where do we have assets, how good are we. We want to kind of talk about that as candidly as we can, so we make sure that we stay up to date with the tests that you just mentioned. Let me just quickly finish up on this. We mentioned our defense, but let's talk about prevention. You've you spent a great deal of time in this part of the world uh, around North Korea. What is key to prevention to making sure that they never get the missiles that could do us harm here at the homeland? Well, first of all, I think we need to continue working closely with China. China has a vested interest in uh, a non-nuclear uh, North Korean peninsula. Uh, and so I think we, along with China and other nations who are selling uh, this kind of technology to North Korea, have got to say enough. Uh, we've got to tighten up on the sanctions. They're too loose right now. And we've got to cut off the cash flow. Uh, to North Korea in order to do that. Admiral, it's great to have you in the program. I appreciate your expertise and look forward to having you back. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna Lee.